Good morning and a warm welcome. Sage for Calkine TV here reporting to you live from Sydney and you're watching the Global Markets Roundup. Let's dive into some key highlights and happenings from yesterday, starting with the US market. US and global equity benchmarks hit all-time highs on Monday as the Federal Reserve appeared in no rush to step away from its massive stimulus as US oil prices edged higher in choppy trading. MSCI's benchmark for the global equity markets hit a record high and the European stocks ended flat on Monday as a British holiday made for languid trade but were set for strong monthly gains on expectations that continued central bank support would sustain an economic recovery. Blue chip S&P 500 and tech heavy Nasdaq Composite continued their gains on Monday, August 30th from the previous week's record closes after technology and consumer discretionary stocks rallied. The S&P 500 was up 0.43% to 4,528.79. The Dow Jones fell 0.16% to 35,399.84. The Nasdaq Composite rose 0.90% to reach 15,265.89. And the small cap Russell 2000 was down 0.49% to 2,265.99. The Fed Chair Jerome Powell's remarks on the economy at the Jackson Hole conference on Friday bolstered investors' confidence. He stressed the current inflation is transitory, driven by the raw material shortage. He also said the bank would start withdrawing monetary stimulus later this year. And meanwhile, markets were eagerly waiting for the Labor Department's jobs report this week. Technology and consumer discretionary stocks were the top movers on the S&P 500 Monday. Economy-sensitive stocks declined amid the coronavirus concerns. Financial and energy stocks were the bottom movers. Nine of the 11 sectors of the index stayed in the green. Stocks of PayPal holdings surged 3.91% after media reports claimed that it might provide a stock trading option on its platform to customers. On the other hand, shares of Robinhood markets declined 4.05% after the PayPal news. The gaming company NetEase's stock dropped 1.48% after the Chinese regulators announced that children below 16 years can spend only an hour online games on weekends and holidays. Let's take a look at the futures and commodities market now. Gold futures were down 0.38% to $1,812.65 US per ounce. Silver decreased by 0.15% to $24.00. 0.073 US per ounce, while copper rose 1.05% to reach $4.3777 US. The Brent oil futures increased by 0.64% to reach $72.16 US per barrel and WTI crude was up 0.55% to reach $69.12 US. Moving on now to the bond market. The 30-year Treasury bond yields were down 1.07% to 1.898, while the 10-year bond yields fell 2.30% to 1.282. The US dollar futures index increased by 0.02% to $92.71 US or 71 cents. And now it's time for a small break, but do stay tuned. I'll be back with the Asia and Australia market updates. Property by Kalkine. Looking for a dream home? Well, that may sound easy, but it isn't. And from looking for a property that is the right fit for you in terms of cost and other factors, to zeroing down on the right mortgage plan, there are various aspects to consider. And for the latest slowdown in the property market, tune in on Kalkine TV with me, Sage. I will give the latest updates on the property market as well as real estate stocks to help you make the right decision. Keep watching Property with Kalkine. Welcome back. I'm Sage. You're watching the Global Markets Roundup show by Kalkine TV. 
The Europe-wide stock 600 ended largely unchanged at 472.68 points, but was on course to end August with a 2.4% rise, its seventh straight month of gains in what would be its longest winning run in over eight years. The Eurozone bond yields fell on Monday, tracking a downward move in US Treasuries after showing little reaction as the German inflation rose to a fresh 13-year peak. Germany's 10-year yield, the benchmark for the euro area, fell two basis points to 0.44%. And the London-based cryptocurrency mining company Argo Blockchain has filed for a secondary listing in the United States. The company has submitted a confidential draft registration statement to the U.S. Sec Securities and Exchange Commission to list its American Depository Shares, or ADS, on the Nasdaq global market. An ADS is an equity share issued by a foreign company to list its shares on the U.S. stock exchanges. The Japanese stocks closed higher on Monday, catching the tailwind from a bounce on Wall Street after U.S. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell's comments at the Jackson Hole Symposium allayed the market fears of a fast withdrawal of the pandemic-era stimulus. The broad topics rallied into the close to end at the day's high of 1,950.14, a 1.11% advance to a more than two-week peak. And the Nikkei gained 0.54% to 27,789.29, but off the high of 27,921.55 reached early in the trading day. And the Chinese blue chip slipped on Monday while Shanghai stocks rose slightly as market participants awaited purchasing manager surveys for manufacturing and services to see if a trend of slowing growth would continue. And the blue chip CSI 300 index fell 0.3% while the Shanghai Composite Index edged up 0.2%. South Korean shares ended higher on Monday after the US Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell laid out a slower than expected path to monetary tightening, calming the investor nerves. And the Kospi closed up 10.29 points or 0.33%. The Australian shares are expected to push higher on Tuesday after the U.S. stock indices hit all-time highs overnight, led by a rally in the tech stocks. The benchmark index ASX 200 closed 0.2% higher at 7,504.5 points. The domestic investors would also closely track earnings of some major firms, such as Points Bet Holdings, Harvey Norman and IGO Limited. The oil prices rose but were off a four-week high after the weakening of Hurricane Ida into a Category 1 hurricane within 12 hours of arriving as a Category 4. And while the Brent crude rose $73.41 US a barrel, WTI climbed to $69.21 US a barrel. And the energy stocks such as Woodside Petroleum and Santos could trade higher on Tuesday. The gold prices, they fell as the dollar surged from its lows and investors also awaited the release of key U.S. jobs data later in the week. The spot gold fell 0.4% to $1,808 U.S. 67 cents per ounce. Gold futures closed 0.4% lower at $1,812 U.S. and 20 cents. ASX listed gold stocks such as Northern Star Resources and Newcrest Mining Limited could trade lower on Tuesday. And thank you for joining us on that report. But that's all for now. And this has been Sage reporting for Calkine. Keep watching Calkine TV for more market updates.